autism has traditionally been symbolised by the puzzle piece, but thanks to behaviour analysis, our understanding of autism is no longer puzzling. To understand autistic behaviour, we must first see behaviour as response populations that can change over time, just like populations of animal species. Consider the long neck of a giraffe. Giraffe ancestors had much shorter necks on average, with some variation in neck length, but even a slight advantage in neck length afforded access to food over their shorter-necked peers. This ecological advantage led to a reproductive advantage, and the average length of the giraffe neck increased from generation to generation, resulting in the giraffes we know today. Just as the environment selects favourable characteristics of species, it also selects favourable behaviour over the life of an individual organism. An operant class is a population of responses that serve the same function. The environment selects the responses with the greatest ecological fitness, which are more likely to be reproduced. Following a normal distribution, behaviour is more probable along a continuum of discrimination and generalisation. This is due to a phenomenon known as stimulus control. Ecologically fit behaviour falls within a range of environmental control across the different exteroceptors – sight, sound, taste, touch and smell. Suppose you're taught that a spherical, handheld object is called a ball. Other similar objects come to control my response, ball, through generalisation. Your verbal behaviour is ecologically fit, provided it's made within the context stimuli that meet the qualifications of being both spherical and handheld. But if stimulus control extends beyond the fitness threshold through overgeneralization, a type 1 error, you may say ball in the presence of rocks, frisbees or other items that won't access reinforcement. Similarly, extending beyond the fitness threshold through overselectivity, a type 2 error, may preclude my responding ball in the presence of qualifying stimuli that have not been explicitly taught. For individuals with stimulus control disorders like autism, much of their behaviour is under the control of spurious environmental sources, prohibiting competition from other stimuli and leading to skewed response populations. Prepotent stimulus control may lead to visual sensitivity, like the flickering of fluorescent lights, or inattention like failing to make eye contact. It may lead to an increased sensitivity to sounds, like a conversation down the block. On the other hand, many parents initially believe their children with autism are deaf because they fail to respond to their own name. Some individuals refuse to wear tight-fitting clothing or shoes, while others have an extremely high pain tolerance. Many individuals have food selectivity and will only eat a limited variety of foods. Others consume non-edible materials. Similarly, olfactory sensitivity may be heightened to the point of finding the smell of perfumes and chemicals repugnant, or they may be weakened to the point of prohibiting one from smelling their own body odour. Moreover, autistic stimulus control may occur simultaneously across multiple exteroceptors, further weakening environmental homeostasis. Different contingency histories make each individual with autism unique, but an understanding of autistic stimulus control may lead to behaviour analytic interventions that shift skewed response populations towards a normal distribution. For more information on applied behaviour analysis, please visit the following links.